Like, <laughs> happy endings aren't as common as car crashes. I want to love them too, okay? I don't want to be a hater. I am a hater though. I have been coerced to giving Talia Hibbert one more chance. One more. She gets one more chance. Everyone loves this esteemed author. She has written a ton of romance books. All of the romance books. I have had the fortune to read Get a Life, Chloe Brown. Made a whole video about it and why I personally don't like it, which I'll get into a little later. And I read some other one, The Roommate Risk, but like it had my favorite trope in it, which is like forced proximity. Ball dropped. Ball dropped. Also in a vlog that I will try and find and link below. So yeah, this girl has been disappointing me day in and day out. And now I have to give her another chance because it is my hot girl summer, my romance reading era. I love reading romance in the summer, so I guess I have to try and read another Dahlia Hibbert book. I'm giving her the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to try and go in with zero expectation, and the book I'm going to read is after age what's her name eve brown i think it is it's here i have the audiobook for it i'm gonna give it a listen hoping to like it i believe it is the one out of the three books that she has in that series of the brown sisters that everyone says is the best so i'm hoping i actually enjoy it for one you can watch my whole reality reading vlog if you want about why i didn't like it alive chloe brown i just realized i am kind of skipping a book i did not read take a hint danny brown which i think I, I i read that other people also love that book as well but i got the audiobook for actor age so that's what you're getting okay so the flightiest brown sister crashes into the life of an uptight bnb owner and has him falling hard literally eve brown is certified hot mess no matter how hard she strives to do right, her life always goes horribly wrong. Okay, I might like this. I love messy black women trying to adult. I love it. We love that representation. That is me. A series I always talk about and love is Black Girls Must Die Exhausted, which definitely started my adult fiction phase because I just love seeing the representation of a, a woman who don't got it together because I feel like black women in media are either that typical really angry and upset woman or they have it together and they're like the perfect mom and they're like the perfect human being so i don't want to be a garbage fire mess and i don't want to be perfect i want to figure it out i need role models baby michelle obama is just too high of an icon i need someone realistic okay okay let's see um but when her personal brand of chaos ruins an expensive wedding her parents draw the line it's time for eve to grow up and prove herself okay I think that's the thing maybe that I have the issue with the Brown Sisters is that they just seem to come from so much privilege and that really really bothers me as a person who is middle class I feel like I have tons of privilege I'm in the US I have housing I don't have a job I'm looking for a job right now <laughs> but I have savings I am also an actor and have jobs through that but like student loans, you know, health insurance, the amount of bills I have just to function and to live a life like the Brown Sisters where they just don't worry about any of those basic things really bothers me. I don't know why. I just, I, <clears throat> privilege is one of those things that I just can't ignore in a book because it just radiates insincerity to me, even though that experience is probably completely true to other people. And there is a life of issues beyond money. I just don't live in that world. <laughs> I'm already really concerned because this whole movie is like, oh my god, my life is so hard. I have no money because my parents stopped giving me my allowance. I'm going to throw a tantrum. I'm going to throw a tantrum. Okay. Okay, I finally made it to the 10% mark and I'm getting a grip of the story very much what the synopsis said, but it's we're only 10% of the way in. So I'm hoping there'll be some, you know, peaks and valleys pretty soon. So our main character Eve does what I, exactly what I said. Um, she gets cut off from her parents financially and she has to get her own job and her own place. And I can maybe agree with her parents that she's a little spoiled. So I don't enjoy that, but maybe... I'm hoping, I'm getting, I'm getting the inkling of hope that she's going to be put in her place. So I'm excited for that. The male love interest is very much grumpy. Um, and I love the autistic rep. I, I'm not autistic, but I will look at the reviews afterwards. I believe um, Talia Hibbert is on the spectrum or just tends to write with characters who have disabilities and have like a variety of 
like characteristics and traits. She has a lot of representation in her books, which I love. But just because it, there's a lot of representation doesn't mean that it's good representation or that I'll enjoy it. The representation can be good and I could still not enjoy my time. So very much hoping to enjoy these two, ship these two. At this 10% mark, I can ship them. Uh, I, I like his grumpy attitude towards her and him being like, no, I don't like her. She's disorganized. I don't like it. And I like that she's very carefree. They are clearly opposites, but I'm hoping we dive a little deeper into maybe why she doesn't chase her dreams or she's so scared of failure being the youngest sister and things like that. Like, let, let's get deep and then we can get romantic. You know what I mean? So, I'll keep you posted. Okay, party people, I am now, I think, 30% of the way through, I guess. Let me double check. Ah, oh, yes. Okay, exactly 30% of the way through on chapter 8. And the conflict has um, kind of happened, and now our characters are just having mad sexual tension while pretending to hate each other. <laughs> uh, romance books, just... They, they be doing the most with so little like oh are you eating how hot <laughs> that's the energy this book is giving thoughts so far is that it's it's fun i feel like there is still the potential for me to like it more i'm just thinking that it's not it's definitely not a new favor guys for sure <laughs> i i mean i i i will let it i will give it the 50 percent mark and then you know, I, you know what i'm gonna give it the whole book i'm gonna read the whole book See how I feel about it, give you my thoughts. But at the 30% mark, I'm like, this is a cute romance story. I honestly really like Mimi Grace um, as a romantic author who has a lot of steam in it because the tension between the characters, I don't know, I actually believe the sexual tension. Whereas what I've experienced with Talia Hibbert, I actually really like the tension between Chloe and what's his face and the get a life Chloe Brown. Not that the tension was believable, I just didn't enjoy like that he was so clearly a great guy <laughs> and I'm just like that's not a real person he's like too perfect um besides the fact that like he overreacted in the third act breakup that's a different story but I just like currently don't care for their conflict like I don't care for her being in a place of privilege where now she has been challenged to in a year have a job just for a year and then her parents will give her a, her allowance back that also doesn't mean anything because someone has already given her a previous like someone already offered her a job and then she got this job to work at the bread and breakfast which is in the synopsis which we know of so there's no real conflict now besides like maybe her owning up and actually doing the work i'm just not invested and i'm also not invested in him and the well-being of this bread and breakfast i am only 30 percent of the way through so i'm gonna keep going try and get to 50 percent tonight and we'll we'll see what happens i'm hoping to love these characters that's all i need it's a it's a three star right now it's not bad it's not great i'd like it to be great because everyone says they love these freaking brown sisters i want to love them too okay i don't want to be a hater i am a hater though i don't want to be help me help me <laughs> It's next day, friends, and I have a Spongebob shirt on. Let me show you. I'm very, very fond of this thrift find. <laughs> I got to 50% last night. And let me update you, because your girl has different opinions now. Um, a quote I very much enjoyed was, Happy endings aren't as common as car crashes. Facts. Oh, there was a sweet little moment. Eve was explaining her relationship with her mom. In comparison to his relationship with his very neglectful parents and just sounded honestly very abusive she explains that like oh my mom once bought this like giant big house and it made my sister chloe who's a very anxious awkward person really scared so you know what she did she got up and sold the house she got a new house because that's what parents do that's what moms kind of should do comfort their kids i mean i don't know about like moving house and i also really appreciate that he keeps calling her out for being freaking rich he's like is this a rich people problem you don't know how to do things because you're rich <laughs> which i madly appreciate because i think that's yeah one of the biggest things is like i feel like she's like kind of disconnected to us laymen who who don't have that wealth 
But then I also was talking to my mom about this and she was like, the reason why Talia Hibbert does this, I saw in an interview, is that black women should also feel like they can come from a place of privilege and have the same, you know, life experiences as white female protagonists do in these romance novels, which I'm like, here, here, appreciate it. Um, as an insecure bitch, it makes me feel all types of ways, but I do love to see it. Love to see the representation. Also, the autistic rep from our main male character is really good and how he's constantly trying to kind of communicate with her. It's all very good and you see them growing and supporting each other while still having lots of sexual tension. So I can't wait for them to act on it. But I am enjoying this book a lot more. I think it is not, it, well, how do I describe this? I think the first 30% I was not vibing. I was not having a good vibe. Now, 50% of the way through, I'm having a vibe. I'm rooting for the two to get together, which I think is the only thing that's important in a romance novel is, do I actually ship the two people together? Is this a fun, you know, romantic time? And it's finally getting there where I'm like, yes, let's go. Does it mean that the story has a lot of heart or a lot of conflict? Are these my favorite? like people to read about or am I really invested in these people? Not really. So this is giving me a fun solid three star vibes. Like if Talia Hibbert's other books were like this, I definitely think she would be considered a very good author in my opinion and I'd be excited for more of her work. Like now I'm excited to enter kind of act three in this story. So 50% now 50 to 75. This is where we make or break a story. So I, I'm having fun times. Let's keep it going. Let's not have the thir third act breakup be awful, <laughs> predictable. You know what I mean? Like right now I can't even guess it. So I'm hoping it's going to be a good, a good vibe. You know what I mean? You probably don't. <laughs> You're not in my head. You don't know what I'm talking about because I'm a crazy woman. I'm just excited for now this third act because I think this will either make it a three star like solid three star or a four star oh, because it could get better if the conflict makes sense and it actually makes me invested for the characters this has the potential to be a good book we will say we will say i'm pleasantly surprised i am 70 percent of the way through and i care about the characters finally <laughs> i'm not only shipping them but i actually value their input as humans I'm so happy. We also have a character that's researching it to see if they are autistic, which is interesting because it's a conversation about like, it's kind of harder to tell with women. Kind of same with ADHD, which is interesting. Why these things are so normalized for men, but for women, it's always harder. Like, <sighs> so sad to see, but I'm happy. <laughs> Never thought that would happen. I'm excited. I'm thrilled. There's not a third act breakup, but there's complications with them. Work, environment, boss, employee. She's thinking about her whole life and she's trying to be more mature for herself and make good decisions. We love to see it. I'm happy to keep reading. This is making me think that I should read Take a Hint, Danny Brown. Because I think she's going to be a workaholic, which is very much me. And I... Do I like Talia Hibbert's writing now, all of a sudden? Maybe. <laughs> I need to roll out of bed and finally end this vlog and tell you my thoughts on this book because I have I have lots of feelings. I'm like shocked. Okay, let, let's talk about this book. Okay, I've decided I don't want to leave my bed. <laughs> I'm staying in here to wrap up this vlog. Uh, I'm lazy, what can I say? So I did end up downloading uh, the ebook to my Kindle from my library. I didn't buy anything for this vlog, which is great. Highly recommend checking out Libby. I'll also link down below. Scribd, Libro FM, a bunch of online places for like affordable-ish audiobooks, but highly recommend using your library if you can. Cause if I were to dislike this book, I'd be so pissed if I had spent $20 trying to buy it isn't that like the worst about book buying and it's just like it's so expensive so this book last night took a turn at the 80% page mark for me personally I was 
very shocked. We had our third act breakup, which honestly was completely unnecessary and also made me so angry because within like a page of the third act breakup, both parties had decided that this, what they were doing was stupid. And I think that's another infuriating thing about the third act breakup. It's like, okay, if you're going to end things, at least like make it make sense so that way it's a, a lasting consequence. Like, it made sense at the 50% mark that they decided that they weren't, that they shouldn't date. Obviously, boss, employee, y'all shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> she and she, her character was like, I'm going to be a mature adult and focus on myself. And I actually really enjoyed that, though that dialogue did not last long at all. She quickly went, I want to have sex with him because I want to. I mean, chase your heart, little girl. Do your thing. I shouldn't say little girl. Me and Eve are the same age and probably experiencing many of the same developmental growth processes. Did that make sense? No, but we're, we're, I hope you're tracking. I hope you're following this train of thought. So yeah, third act breakup, stupid. And I just feel like this is a solid 3.5. I think that's what I'm gonna give it because I did start to enjoy the story a lot more. I think it was at like right before the 50% mark was like, oh, I'm invested in these characters. And as I was saying last night, I'm like, oh, the third act, I really hope it makes me really invested in the people because otherwise I don't care to follow. And it followed through. It made me care for them. And I understand they're kind of trials and tribulations throughout life and I, I appreciate what they're going through and all of that I do feel like I don't know I feel like the representation of autism was great as I said last night different characters in this book were exploring the idea of them possibly being autistic introducing that idea and exploring that and not making it a big deal because I feel like a lot of people would depict getting diagnosed with anything as a like a bad thing and being enraged so like i enjoyed that it was calmly introduced and the character was like hmm this kind of makes sense but i also know who i am and love myself i think this is just a different way of perceiving how i function and it kind of helps me so cool i very much enjoyed all of that and i did end up enjoying the chemistry uh, the family dynamics was very fun to watch but overall like still not a favorite book i think it personally took a little too long to get invested into the couple when the character literally has to narrate in the book i met him last week and i'm in love with him that's ridiculous you know it's ridiculous don't be trying to convince me otherwise sis okay okay so yeah i'd say a 3.5 i think i'm gonna have to do a vlog on the second book take a hit Danny brown i think i'm just gonna have to do it because <laughs> I'm gonna end up reading all of Talia Hibbert's books just to see where I lie. Do I love or hate them? I just have to figure out where my thoughts, where my feelings lie. Because I feel like a lot of people on the internet will tell you, this book is amazing, this book sucks, this is that. And you just never know for yourself. So it's good to share. I think I like sharing what I feel so that way you guys can kind of figure out where you feel. I know when I in the first vlog of reading Get a Life, Chloe Brown spoke about the representation of having a chronic illness and how I didn't appreciate the representation because she came from a place of privilege and she was not facing any issues of, you know, struggling with getting medication, getting doctors to take her seriously, things that I think are very common for especially women of color in this situation. But I guess, you know, America's a different bubble. She is not in the US. I think she was in London. I think they're, they're in the UK or they're somewhere where healthcare is not as big of a, a problem I, anyway there's there was many complaints i had about that but i'll just link that video down below if you want to check it out after this one i just love seeing where my opinions lie with romance let me know how you feel how you felt i just i feel like sometimes tally hibbert writes unlikable characters and tries to get you to like them which i i enjoy ish like three star okay but it's also nice to have characters that you immediately love I'm thinking of recent romance books that I really enjoyed. The Neighbor Faber by Neighbor Faber. I can't speak. The Neighbor Faber by Christina Forrest. A very sweet novel where I immediately was rooting for our female protagonist and the male protagonist. But like I was rooting for her so hard. Same with The Romantic Agenda by Claire Can. So I feel like romance, those were five star romances for me because I loved the character. And I didn't even think they were too likable. 
you know what I mean? They were just going through it and trying to process their feelings. But maybe I just don't like unlikable characters, that trait. Maybe. But I think Eve's a very likable character. Oh, you know what also? Okay, okay, okay. I also realized I think I like this book because it had a performance arts element. Oh, okay. I also think I enjoyed this book because it had a performance arts element. She wanted to be in the performing arts and she failed quote unquote and didn't make it and I really love that they mentioned that she didn't look the part that she ended up giving a role up that they had her playing like a gnome or something that because of her size that she could you know that she wouldn't make it that she wasn't like pretty enough by like beauty standards I really enjoyed that they mentioned that because even though I love that the plus size rep and all of that stuff I feel like a lot of books can kind of, you know, go too heavy into the self-hating or go too, so into the self-love that they don't actually depict an honest experience of, well, a lot of people get bullied or experience a lot of negativity around their size and their appearance. So I love that Eve loved herself, decided to love herself and know her value and worth while also saying, yeah, kind of this, this career path I wanted people weren't treating me right so I don't want it anymore what a novel experience I really enjoyed that depiction especially for someone like me who is an actor who deals with that even as a petite woman going into auditions and stuff so many people will say so much about your appearance nobody is perfect yet the industry and beauty standard is just picking us apart constantly so I really enjoy that ex that just representation overall i think that's what Tila i think that's what makes i think that's what makes talia hibbert such a a powerful writer i think that's why a lot of people love her work it's because she really makes authentic experiences which i i really really enjoy do i enjoy her characters mm, not as much the male characters especially they lack a little luster in my opinion, but that's okay. So let me know, comment down below, should I read Take a Hint, Danny Brown? Do I need to make another vlog reading another Talia Hibbert book? Let me know. I'm just gonna have a whole playlist of Talia Hibbert reading apparently. So I'll link down below the vlog of me reading Get a Life, Chloe Brown. There we go. My oh, there's two. That is it for today's vlog. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I really, really appreciate you. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you like it. I'm coming out with more content. I have two fantasies that I'm so excited to read. As I was saying in the last vlog, um, a, a Day of Fall and Night by Samantha Shannon's on my TBR for this summer. It's happening. It's just the fact that that audiobook is 38 hours long. Like, that is too long. But I'm gonna suffer. I'm gonna do it this weekend. That's what I'm committed to doing. <laughs> and I also want to check out Fourth Wing. So, so I got a lot of fun reading content coming out soon. Don't want to miss it. Hit the notification bell if you like it. And yeah, <sighs> sending you lots and lots of love. And I deeply appreciate you spending any sort of time with me at all. It means the world. And I will see you in the next video. Bye bye. Bye bye.